Good morning. <clears throat> Grateful for another maggot-free day above the dirt, Jersey Shore. Check it out. So today's video is called Be Careful of Closure because you might close yourself off in a trap. <laughs> so most of us come to spiritual practice um, at best because um, we're not necessarily unhappy or suffering, but we're, we're feeling unfulfilled, purposeless, uh, feeling like something's missing. And the other end of the spectrum is we're suffering tremendously. We're very unhappy, feel unfulfilled, and um, look to transcend and transform and liberate ourselves, which is great. The problem is, whether conscious of it or not, we, we carry deeply held beliefs, beliefs that believe what we're facing externally and internally is fixed and permanent and inherent. And which raises the question, how can we liberate and transform and transcend anything that we believe to be fixed, permanent, and especially inherent within us? So we hear people uh, a lot saying, well, I have to work with my issue. And this is definitely a valid statement, but the problem is it's a slippery slope because sometimes working with our issue, number one, have we identified the correct issue? And number two, is working with it just another form of attachment? So in other words, um, when I work with something, I'm holding on to it. Am I really healing it or am I perpetuating it? That's only something that we can each subjectively identify and, and uh, decide upon. But that's the trap. Are we healing the issue or are we perpetuating it by working with it and being attached and holding on to it? Right? And a lot of times identifying the issue is realizing cause and effect in the sense that um, a lot of times what we're, quote, working with is simply our reaction to the real issue and we get caught up in the symptom and get stuck there and perpetuate it instead of working with the cause and healing that. So we don't react with that unhealthy, harmful symptom anymore. So that's important. We also hear people say, well, I'm working with things because I need closure. And another valid statement. We definitely need closure. The problem is that becomes a slippery slope because sometimes closure keeps us so close to the issue that again, we're, we form attachment, we perpetuate it. We're not healing. We're actually, and this is kind of hard to wrap our heads around sometimes when we're not ready to hear it, but sometimes Closure is simply a guise to stay close to the problem because we find an unhealthy and unwholesome security and comfortability in it. And what I mean by that is we're not happy about what happened to us. We're not condoning it. We're not, um, we're, we're not happy about what we're going through, but at the same time, um, we find comfortability and safety and security in it because it's familiar and because it allows us to, um, to avoid, to spiritual bypass, to disassociate. So in other words, if, if I stay close to, to, to something in the name of closure, sometimes the motivation can be because it keeps me steeped in self-pity, in resentment, in anger, in blame, in shame. And, and when I do that, I don't have to really engage the problem or face my, my responsibility in it. And um, it allows me to, um, to get a case of the poor me's, right? And we've all been there. It, it's much easier to feel self-pity, which is the height of arrogance, um, and I'll get into that in another video, but if you think about that, it's very arrogant to be consumed with self-pity, um, to be so self-absorbed um, and, uh, and then turning that into lashing out at others and blaming them for our problem. Now, this is in no way diminishing being a victim, so don't twist it that way. 
It just means that, that sometimes the closure we're looking for doesn't come from working with the symptoms and it doesn't come from staying close to it so we can wallow in, in uh, the, 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 the negativity of it for some kind of twisted sense of um, self-righteousness. The true closure, the true liberation and transformation that we're seeking comes simply from letting go of our identification with that self, with that con construct of self, that idea of self, and its attachment to pursuit and pleasure as aversionary tactics, right? So sometimes we do have to deal with the symptoms, but it should be an initial uh, dealing with to get to the core issue that lays at its foundation. So it's very easy. It's a simple answer. Let go of identifying with, with all that is temporary, with all that is fleeting, with all that is, is, is um, uh, with the illusion and with the delusion. Let go of it. Very simple answer. Not easy to do, obviously. So um, I hope this was helpful. Don't get caught in the traps. Be careful of the slippery slopes. And, and this, this, this requires a rigorous honesty with self, right? Um, as it's much easier to, um, to turn away than it is to face and engage. So letting go, even though it's a simple answer, is, um, takes great courage, great fortitude, great strength, great perseverance which um, which at the time we might not be feeling. And that's usually because we're so steeped in uh, the self-righteous um, aversionary tactics. So um, have a great maggot-free day above the dirt. Peace out.